Welcome to a new episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Our topic today is on Saint Archdeacon Habib Gerges, Coptic Orthodox educator and reformer. Our guest today is His Grace Bishop Suriel, Diocese of Melbourne and affiliated regions. Uh, we are honored, Your Grace, to have you accept our invitation to appear on our program. Thank you, Dr. Saad. It's a great honor and pleasure indeed. Thank you. Your Grace uh, has been on our program before, and we are grateful for that. Uh, and uh, one of the episodes in the past was on St. Archdeacon Habib Gerges, but that was even before he was canonized in June 2013. And before Your Grace uh, received your PhD uh, on this uh, important and recently recently canonized saint uh, would like to ask your grace to share with us your experience of defending uh, this dissertation and what are uh, your academic plans in the future well it was a, a very difficult process a very grueling process uh, in particular uh, leading up to the defense i mean the defense is uh, really the culmination of all of the effort of many years of uh, reading and writing and researching and you know writing uh, history um, is not something easy because sometimes it's like putting uh, a puzzle uh, together with missing pieces of information that you have to find so uh, it's a bit of detective work I, I suppose but uh, I think it was a very fascinating uh, journey for me. Um, I enjoyed it, even though that it was very, very difficult, sometimes a very lonely journey, um, <clears throat> and many, many hours that are spent, thousands of hours, in fact, uh, to do this research. The defense itself, um, uh, I was a bit... Uh, nervous i guess there was a big audience in attendance his holiness uh, pope toadros uh, kindly sent uh, two blessed bishops from egypt to attend his grace bishop epiphanius and his grace bishop maar and also his grace bishop david from new york attended and also about 20 priests coming from various places in the united states and canada um, and about a uh, hundred Coptic faithful. So it was quite an audience and the university. Uh, it's not something that happens every day. And also the Dean of the Graduate School of Religion and Religious Education at Fordham University uh, was in attendance for the whole event, even though that he usually does not attend these events, but uh, he thought it was very significant that he attended and had time to speak with uh, all of the people there. Um, I think the defense went quite well. There were some difficult questions uh, uh, that were uh, put to me, but I think that uh, uh, I was able to answer in the appropriate way. And at the end, the, the this doctoral dissertation was accepted without any alteration, so as, as it is. And um, I'm hoping now, after a bit of rest, to uh, begin looking at uh, finding a suitable publisher uh, to publish this important work, which I think uh, will be useful for the Coptic Orthodox Church. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, I look forward also to translating it into 
uh, Arabic and uh, I mean the abridged, abridged version and, and other languages. But uh, that university from which Your Grace received a PhD, uh, Fordham University in uh, New York City, uh, is a famous uh, ancient university and it is Jesuit Catholic University. And uh, what, what is your advice for people, uh, especially uh, second generation, who would like to uh, follow your footsteps and go to that university to, to do a PhD in Coptic hagiography, for example, like uh, this dissertation on uh, Archdeacon Habib Gerges? Well, uh, I mean, Fordham University is a very well-renowned university in the USA. Uh, it dates back to 1841 when it was established quite a large university. Um, I was studying in the religious education department, but there is also a theology department there that also has an orthodox chair, Eastern Orthodox. I know that we have one Coptic student that will begin there uh, in the fall uh, to study theology. So I think, you know, that there will be, there is certainly a lot of interest among young Copts to further advance their knowledge of Coptic civilization and history. Um, and I think this is something that should be encouraged and we should encourage more young people to go and to research and study uh, and know their faith, know their history, know what the Coptic civilization stands for, this rich heritage that we have. There is still a lot, a lot of research that needs to be done in my field in particular, with the modern Coptic period, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done, and in particular with all of the archival documents that I had discovered and uh, cataloged, I think more work, more research can be done in that field as well. Uh, your Grace, uh, I see your effort in documenting and analyzing uh, the history of Archdeacon Habib Gerges. Uh, in terms of Coptic ha hagiography, uh, you are following the footsteps of Saint Athanasius, the 20th Patriarch, who actually uh, documented and wrote for us the life of Antony. And from the life of Antony, uh, Europe uh, turned into Coptic monasticism uh, and, and, and a long history over 1600 years uh, of relationship between Eastern uh, or in particular Coptic and Western monasticism. Uh, your Grace followed the, the footsteps of St. Athanasius in doing your PhD dissertation uh, in that uh, the fruits of your efforts. Uh, please, in your journey with the PhD and in, your, in the text of your thesis dissertation, uh, how did Coptic identity come across uh, that you discovered through this research or through the life of Habib Gerges and through his canonization? Uh, would you please enlighten us on the point of Coptic identity? Yeah, I think uh, that comes through uh, somewhat in the, in the dissertation quite a bit actually um, because I think this was one of the major concerns of uh, Saint Habib Gerges, how to preserve uh, the Coptic identity, and I think he he did this uh, through uh, several means. Um, uh, he used the theological college as a hub of activity for education and to disseminate religious and theological education throughout the Coptic Church. But he played a, an important role in. Uh, uh, reinvigorating interest in the Coptic language, and this was an important aspect of uh, maintaining Coptic identity. So he played an emphasis, he placed a big emphasis on this in teaching uh, Coptic language uh, in the theological college, um, uh, bringing up the importance uh, of Coptic history, um, but also through many hymns, uh, that he wrote uh, to encourage young people uh, to know their dogma and their faith, and also through popular means of education, through giving importance to the Coptic liturgy, um, uh, and for people to come and to participate. For example, in the villages where there was hardly no 
communication between the Copts there and the church. He began to encourage priests to come from the cities to take the holy altar board and to begin to administer the liturgy or celebrate the liturgy to the faithful there. Uh, and this was very significant and very important. And also through religious pictures that he used to print in the millions and distribute uh, that had the lives of the saints um, so that people would know their history, know the martyrdom of those that lost their life and shed their blood in order to preserve the faith and hand it down to us from generation to generation. He used many different educational means to be able to preserve the Coptic identity. Uh, Your Grace, uh, I, I, if I may congratulate you on uh, yet one more achievement uh, earlier than the dissertation defense uh, that was about a year uh, or more, uh, maybe two years earlier when uh, the seminary in Melbourne, which uh, is named St. Athanasius Coptic Orthodox Theological College, uh, was awarded accreditation by uh, the uh, group of universities uh, around it. And uh, that accreditation means a whole lot because it's the first Coptic seminary in the world to achieve such milestone. What, if you may uh, walk us uh, from Habib Gerges to that accreditation, what would be the uh, line or thread that goes from Habib Gerges to the accreditation in Melbourne? Yeah. I think this was one of the goals of Archdeacon Habib Gerges that he wanted to see the theological college in Cairo to reach international standards. Uh, and he would borrow, for example, uh, from the West many different curricula from theological colleges. And he wrote in his book on the 45-year history of the theological college in 1938, mentioning that he had brought curricula from Rome, from Athens, from the UK and even from the USA and he took from it what was suitable for an orthodox setting um, so that he could try to raise the standard of the theological college um, and so this was very very significant for him uh, that he, he thought that for the college to be at this uh, academic standard internationally that this would strengthen uh, the faith of the believers, if he has well-educated and uh, qualified priests and preachers in the church, then the church can begin again to be enlightened and return back uh, to its former glory. Um, and so here in Melbourne, we try to follow in the footsteps of Archdeacon Habib Gerges, and we worked for many years and I believe, again, that the Theological College here in Melbourne has to be a central hub of religious and theological education that spreads throughout the whole diocese. And that's why we worked very hard, all of the faculty and staff at the college here, to be able to attain that accreditation. And we worked with what was called the Melbourne College of Divinity, uh, now it is known as the University of Divinity and became a university two years ago, uh, which is a group of ten theological colleges, Catholic, uh, Protestant, and we are uh, the first Orthodox college to join. Uh, and we were successful in, in uh, gaining the accreditation, and now we offer an accredited diploma in theology, and we hope that we can continue uh, to offer higher awards in the in the coming years, but this has been a, a very significant event in the life of our theological college here in Melbourne. Uh, I would like to invite the viewers of this episode to look up uh, Saint Athanasius Coptic Orthodox Theological College website. It's on the screen now. Uh, to uh, investigate what they can benefit from that. Uh, uh, availability, uh, whether by attending uh, courses and taking a degree 
dedicating their life to Coptic education and theological education, or to attend the international conferences that are uh, held there uh, occasionally. And uh, Your Grace, what's your next uh, conference in the Theological College uh, in, in the future? Actually, next year, 2015, we're planning to have a conference, an international conference in May, uh, which will be on Copts and modernity. And this is an emerging field, and so it's a very important field that not much has been written about, and many prominent figures and important modern history of the Copts that needs further research and investigation. And we hope to publish a volume at the end of the conference uh, from all of the papers that will be uh, presented at this, at this conference. So we hope that many uh, international scholars uh, and many Copts will actually come and attend this conference. I think it will be uh, uh, a very important conference that uh, maybe the first time such a conference has been held. Thank you. That's, uh, I look forward to either attending or uh, watching uh, parts of the conference later on uh, on the internet uh, and but or, or reading the proceedings of the conference i want to go back to uh, your grace uh, connection with habib gerges and how that connection uh, is intertwined with your connection with pope shinoda uh, god uh, of, of blessed memory uh, in the sense of how much Pope Shinoda personally uh, uh, influenced your choice of Habib Gerges as a subject for study and even companionship. Uh, do you feel that companionship with Habib Gerges personally and, and how Pope Shinoda relates to that? There's no doubt that I feel a very strong connection with Archdeacon Habib Gerges now after doing this very extensive study on him. But uh, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III had a special relationship with him. He respected him very much. I remember him saying that every time that he would go to meet with Archdeacon Habib Gerges, that he would make sure that he had pen and paper so that he could write down any advice and useful words that Habib Gerges would say um, for his own benefit. And I think a lot of the um, <clears throat> methods and the vision that Archdeacon Habib Gerges had uh, that we can see it also in the life of His Holiness Pope Shenouda III of blessed memory. Um, and I remember once when I was in New York, I had the opportunity to meet with His Holiness Pope Shenouda III for about two hours in which he spoke extensively about his experiences uh, and memories uh, about Archdeacon Habib Gerges. So I think all of this was very important uh, for me to know this background uh, as I was doing my research on Archdeacon Habib Gerges. Uh, thank you, Your Grace. And we look forward to this, uh, to if, if you record these two hours that uh, would be somewhat or somehow uh, published uh, in abridged form or in totality. That's a treasure, really a treasure that we look forward to its publication. Yes, I think that uh, could be easily done, and uh, okay. uh, we will try to perhaps publish this through St. Athanasius Press. Well, I look forward to that. Uh, when, uh, of, of blessed memory, uh, God bless his soul, Archdeacon Habib Gerges died in 1951, uh, departed our world. Uh, TV was barely known even in the United States at that time, uh, let alone in Egypt. And uh, what do you think Habib Gerges, as a theological educator and preacher and reformer, uh, would uh, think of TV ministry, uh, like Logos TV, for example, uh, if he had watched uh, uh, our activities today in, in TV broadcasting, especially in evangelism? I have no doubt whatsoever that Archdeacon Habib Gerges will, would have very well utilized all of the technological means that we have today and social media for um, furthering 
uh, Coptic studies and the Coptic faith and dogma amongst the faithful, because you can see glimpses of this in his writings when he speaks, for example, about how to um, overcome illiteracy in the villages, and he was well aware of what was known as the Lobach International System. Lobach was a you, uh, an American missionary who went into the Philippines in 1915 to preach amongst the Moro tribes, and uh, he found that they were illiterate, so he formulated a system called Each One to Teach One, uh, and a simple method for uh, those that know how to read and write to teach those that couldn't, and this system spread all throughout the world. Six million people learned how to read and write using the Lobach International System. And Habib Gerges mentions this system in some detail uh, in his book on the general visitations to the village. Um, this is just one example. Um, there, are, there are others, but uh, I believe that he would have utilized the technology and any means that he had at his hands uh, to assisting him uh, to promote religious and theological education throughout the church. Amazing, amazing yeah. to have this uh, uh, visionary uh, person, 1900, who served the church very well until 1951, 51 years of active ministry, including, of course, the establishment of the Sunday, move, Sunday school movement in 1900, which touched the life of almost every Copt. So this saint really was canonized uh, rightfully, and we are grateful uh, for uh, your grace effort, um, uh, along with other bishops and under the guidance of both uh, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III and His Holiness Pope Tawadros II in the effort and the building momentum to canonize uh, Archdeacon Habib Gerges. And would like to ask Your Grace uh, for a final word of wisdom to conclude this episode. I think uh, there is still much to be researched and more can be done uh, on Saint Archdeacon Habib Gerges. I think I've only just put a, a foundation and I hope uh, more uh, people will become inspired by him and uh, do more research and in particular on the patriarchal archival documents. I think that needs a lot more work and I think uh, more uh, valuable research can be done in this field that will add to our knowledge uh, on the modern Coptic era, which I, I think needs further study and I hope more researchers will be interested to do this so that we can uh, continue this important task. But thank you for your interest in this very important topic. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, again, we thank your grace for uh, about one, 900 pages dissertation on Archdeacon Habib Gerges, uh, who was canonized in June 2013. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm personally uh, blessed and honored to, to have uh, your grace uh, as guest on, on this program of Coptic Civilization. It's a great honor to be with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Saad. Uh, thank you, your grace, and please pray for our uh, ministry here and viewers. Thank you for watching Logos TV. This has been an episode uh, on uh, Archdeacon, the Saint, Habib Gerges, and uh, as a Coptic Orthodox educator and reformer. See you next week on another episode of Coptic Civilization. I'm Michael Saad. Yeah,